Yes, Your Honor. Back again. We're back. It looks like I have a notice of appearance filed. Counsel, can I get your appearances, please? David Ochoa for Sunset again. And it's a, a Joe Coppage for Nona Tobin and also as a, a individually as, as a trustee for the trust as well, the, the Gordon Hanson Trust. Okay, so for today's purposes, because you all were somewhat unclear on Tuesday whether you wanted today to be the actual argument on the motion or whether you just wanted a status check for setting the motion because counsel for plaintiff has um, been here a couple of different times. So what are we doing today? I, I, I talked to, if I, if I can, I, I talked to, to, to David yesterday, Your Honor, mm -hmm. and uh, and also, I, and I apologize, I read the minutes and I guess I was confused as to what, what we were here for on Tuesday, so I do apologize for that. But I've now reread the motions, and, and I think I can, I think, pare them down a little bit. Um, it, it seems that there's motions to by Sun City's asking to dismiss um, the claims uh, that, that she filed as an individual and as trustee. Mm -hmm. uh, I would concur that until it's a time as there's a, a, a mediation, all of the claims for relief and the, the cross claim, except for the quiet title claim, are probably premature at this point in time, and I think those should be dismissed without prejudice. And red mediation? Excuse me, Your Honor? You said mediation. You mean in red mediation? In red yes. mediation. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. So is the, okay. So keep so the quiet title claim. I think under McKnight, I think the quiet title claim survives. I think that as uh, as a beneficiary, I think that Miss Tobin has an interest, <coughs> and I think that she's all she's a, a proper party to to protect that interest. I, I'm unclear, and I, I didn't see anything in the minutes about uh, since it was a status check as to. Um, uh, maintaining uh, for the, the trust to retain counsel, which has now occurred. I didn't know if, if, if that was, you know, again, I think one of the issues is um, she could not represent the trust regardless. And so my thought is, is that to kind of cure things, because I, I want the operative pleading to be filed by, but I want the operative pleading to be, to be filed by counsel, I'm inclined to want to file an amended cross claim to resolve any issues that might that there might be, Your Honor. Counsel, does that mean? Let, let, let's go back a step, just because procedurally, we have okay. two things on for today: status check of corporate counsel. Corporate counsel has filed a notice of appearance as of yesterday, so counsel for the Gordon B. Hanson Trust has filed a notice of appearance. So status check corporate counsel completed. Notice of appearance has been filed with compliance. The second matter that was on is Sun City Anthem Community Association's motion to dismiss Nona Tobin, an individual, and as trustee of the Gordon B. Hanson Trust, their cross claims. Okay? With regards to that, that was the question the court was asking is whether that was going to be heard on the merits today or just scheduled for hearing. Counsel who just appeared on behalf of Nona Tobin and the <coughs> trust has clarified that their position is that Pretty much they would stipulate that most of it could go down to the NRED and then the quiet title, I believe you're saying you wish to file a responsive pleading, excuse me, you wish to file an amended complaint which would moot the motions and then determine where it's, what the next step is. Is that correct or incorrect? Yeah, and I, and, and, and I haven't heard in, in all from fairness, your position. He's I haven't not heard, from the heard that yet, but yeah. the fact is, 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 is that I'm, I am concerned that the operative pleading was filed by a non-attorney and I think to resolve that, I think it's just easier if I just file an amended cross claim that resolves everything, Your Honor. Now I need to hear from the movement, <laughs> Sun City Anthem Community Association, to see what your position is. It appears is. that we are arguing the motion today, Your Honor. <laughs> from my, I, we, we argue that you, we have no claim to quiet title, so therefore that quiet title <laughs> claim should not keep us in the case, even if we're agreeing that the remaining claims need to go to NRED. I think you could rule on that today. We, you know, we have no interest in title to the property and, and that claim alone, it really shouldn't be brought against us and it shouldn't keep us in this case. I think you should demit, dismiss everything. Once we go to NRED, they can then <coughs> file to bring this back in. The, you know, it's without prejudice. Um, you know, we don't need to be in the, the case pending NRED mediation. 
just to be clear, from what I understood from the pleadings of what you're stating here today, <coughs> is Sun City Anthem Community Association is not making any claim to title. You were the foreclose the overseeing foreclosing entity. Is that correct? Correct. So I, I guess how does that impact your what you're asking for? So basically, I'm hearing the motion right now. We're doing it a little bit out of order because of your request first. But and, this, and, and I, I want to try to like, clarify and cut to it, Your Honor, if I could. I thought I might be able to make it faster if I did that. Um, I guess my response to that would be is that they're in effect asking for like summary judgment, Your Honor, and on a motion to dismiss. When if you look at all of the facts in the cross claim that's currently pled, I mean that they raise issues, Your Honor, and so I don't think it's appropriate to grant them what would be akin to summary judgment on the pleadings at this time. You know, you know again, I. If, if we're going to, if they're going to disavow any interest in the property, and if we do, we do the in-red mediation, Your Honor, and, and then come back, we can clean up the pleadings at that point in time. But it, at this stage, I believe what's with McKnight, in, in terms of the McKnight ruling, I think what's appropriate is the quiet title claim may remain, Your Honor. The claims be dismissed, and also, just to clarify, also, Your Honor, I, I think that if you didn't raise this, but there was also the pending cross motion to void the sale under McKnight. I think that also is premature against against anybody at this point in time. I think it should be withdrawn without prejudice to re, to refile that, Your Honor. And I I acknowledge that the, the pleadings are a little bit at this point messy. And that's why I think it's appropriate for us to amend to try and clean things up, Your Honor. Okay. Let me tell you what the court's inclination is. And the court was just double checking. Since this is a motion to dismiss, the court has to look at on the face of the pleadings under Buzz Stew, SFR, whether or not there's any potential claim. And I have to look at the pleadings as alleged. I can't look at things outside the pleadings with the limited um, exceptions there, too, that really don't apply in this case. And so where the court's inclination is, the court's inclination is that I would gr grant in part by stipulation that the motion to dismiss to all claims other than the quiet title claim would be dismissed without prejudice because it needs to go to the NRED process, the claims involving the CCNRs. With regards to the quiet title cross claim, the court's inclined to deny that without prejudice under a, just a 12 standard because that's how this is brought. And if I look at the pleading as is, and in the standard in which I have to look at the pleading as is, um, much of the arguments on are really more of a summary judgment standard and I can't and so the court would either have to determine a if it was brought as a summary judgment it's not it doesn't set forth everything that would be appropriate under rule 56 B the court then has to determine whether or not it would sui sponte turn a motion dismissed into a summary judgment and the court doesn't find that it could appropriately do so in this case um, taking into account also the fact that we had an issue about not having counsel and having to take into account due process aspects, et cetera. So that's why the court would be inclined to deny without prejudice the quiet title under the 12th standard. With regards to the, and I was trying to look to see because I think inadvertently the cross motion did not get shown as being on for today. And so I want to get the correct titling of that motion and let me try and find it in the. Motion. It was plain. It was Tobin's motion to avoid the sale. But just one second. Let me get to <coughs> the exact title of that so we can clear on this. If I can, right? It's it, it was it was entitled Nona Tobin's counter motion to avoid the sale. It was in her filing on three thirty one when she opposed the. Um, Motion to dismiss. It's like March 3rd, oh, yeah, th March 31st, yes. All right, and then your opposition was on April 10th. Okay. It looks like that portion, the counter motion, didn't get teed up, at least from the clerk's standpoint for today. So then the counter motion, Nina Tobin's, Nona Tobin's counter motion to void the sale that was filed on 331, which should have been teed up for today as well. Are you withdrawing that without prejudice? 
Under McKnight, Your Honor, if I read McKnight correctly, I think it's, it's not timely for that yet, Your Honor, and so I would draw that without prejudice, Your Honor. That's going to be withdrawn without prejudice. So the extent it should have been set for today, the extent it wasn't set for today, it would be placed on for today by the agreement of the parties. Is that right? Uh, Your Honor, just, just to clarify, I think there, she may have filed uh, two counter motions. So, you know, just procedure, you might want to deal with that. <coughs> I think she filed a mm -hmm. counter motion on March 3rd also. That's okay. And I, I believe there, that it's the same argument. It's the same, it's the same type caption. Okay. So since you're counsel for, since that was on defendant and intervention, cross claimant and proper person, it doesn't say whether that's in the trustee role or the individual role, and you're counsel now for both. Can the court view it as both the counter motion filed on 3-3, counter motion for order voiding the sale, as well as the counter motion filed on 331 are both withdrawn? That's correct, Your Honor. Without prejudice, I guess. Without, pre without prejudice, refile. Okay. So, you've heard my inclination on your motion to dismiss, because now we've taken care of the court, status check of court counsel has been taken care of. The counter motions have been withdrawn. So now we're back to your motion to dismiss. You've heard the court's inclination. Do you wish to argue further on the court's inclination? Just to clarify, your inclination was to dismiss the quiet title without prejudice, also in addition to the stipulation yeah. without. I was to deny the motion to dismiss with the quiet title because it's a motion to dismiss standard and I have to look at the complaint under 12B standard and that it wouldn't meet, it does meet the minimal threshold under Buzz Stew for a state court pleading as reaffirmed by SFR. So it's granted in part and denied in part was the court's inclination. Granted pursuant to the stipulation of all the parties with all claims other than the quiet title and denied without prejudice as to the quiet title claim under Buzz Stu and SFR. That's the court's inclination. You know, I think we can stipulate to that at this time. I, I think I'd be fine with that ruling by the court. Um, however, I would like to <laughs> put on the record that there's a there's an issue with the status of her interest um, where she says she has an individual claim. Um, his refiling or his amendment may correct it, but I would like to put on the record now that, um, <coughs> you know, she initially alleges, even though she files an, as an individual, that the property is in the trust. Um, she then took steps to remove the property from the trust and transfer it to herself. Um, and, and therefore, if I do have to address the trust claims and her own individual <clears throat> claims in the future, um, you know, where the property stands now would have to be clarified. Um, she, she filed a quit claim from the trust to herself, which I would, you know, argue that's probably not the correct way to transfer that interest given that the suit is over title to the property. Um, <coughs> it may have consequences that she didn't anticipate mm. and potentially even um, transferring the, the balance or the debt to herself as an individual. And part of the reasons, as you realize, the court has to look at the cross-claim as filed, not all the subsequent information on a Rule 12 motion. Hence my inclination to deny it without prejudice. But I think counsel for defendants is going to state what his position is, and then I'm going to turn, and I'm going to make a ruling. Go ahead, counsel. No, I, I think uh, there is. I think there is some issue, Your Honor. It's not. I think before the court right this this point in time, I I believe that Ms. Tobin does have an interest as a beneficiary. Uh, she did try to fix, the, I guess, the the uh, counsel issue by quit claiming. Um, as trustee to herself, but there's no consideration for that. So I don't know. I mean, that's, I don't know what that means at this point in time. And, and, and again, I didn't think it was before the court today, but there is an issue as to interest. Um, at the time these were filed, I believe that the trust had an interest, and I believe she did as well. We'll need to fix that, Your Honor. And I'm, I'm not sure what the fix is. I'm not, I'm not sure the impact of what she did is either. So, okay. The court agrees what's before the court today mm -hmm. under the motion to dismiss standards is the only thing that the court can rule on. Okay, so 
The court's ruling with regards to the motion to dismiss is going to be granted pursuant to stipulation of the parties to all claims other than the quiet title, denied without prejudice with regards to the quiet title claim. The court takes no position on the propriety of any actions that may have happened after the cross claim. The court's merely looking at it on a 12B standard because it was not requested to go s change it into a Rule 56, nor did the court find it appropriate to change it sui sponte into a Rule 56 in light of the procedural posture of this case. Okay, the court takes no position on all those intervening actions. Now, you have stated that you wish to file an amended cross claim. Are you going to do a formal, mo was that an oral motion? Was that a request for a stipulation, or was that just a heads up court, something's coming your way? I think it's heads up court, something's coming your way, okay. Your Honor. Because, I mean, I, I think it probably needs to be a formal motion to do it, I believe, be, be, I think, more appropriate. I just want to make sure if there was something else before the court that the court made sure it addressed all matters before the court. But since that's not, it was just a heads up. <coughs> for today's purposes, I've made my ruling. It is so ordered. Counsel for the movement, can you please prepare the order with regards to your motion to dismiss and the denial of, excuse me, the withdrawal of the two counter motions to void the sale? Okay. Does it make sense to put that all in one order and circulate it to all parties? And I believe it is, Your Honor. EDCR 7.21. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Honor. Thank you. Okay, Howard Howe versus Bluebell Creameries, 715295.